here we are at the town of Ramsgate pub which has stairs down onto the river and lots and lots and lots of goodies at the bottom it's pretty much low tide now I believe but I'm half asleep it's six o'clock in the morning I went to bed only a few hours ago after a bout of heavy drinking and I'm here with Dr. Tones to see if we can find some bits and bats. And down there is Nicola White. Morning has broken like the... <laughs> That's my seven seconds of copyright material. Fair usage. So Nicola is going to risk life and limb, jumping a good eight foot, I would say. There we are. She's doing the action woman thing, letting her hair loose. Of course I am. We're getting my She's going to lower herself down. That means falling a great... Ooh. Lower herself down. No, that's a long way. Look at all of that stuff down there. <laughs> Oh, now, Brandon, you also need to know, there's a spike sticking out where your right foot is. Yeah, maybe, maybe you don't want to rub your leg against that as you go down. Okay, now it's by your left foot now. Okay, yeah, you don't want that between your legs when you jump down, I think. Now, Brandon, 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 before, be, Brandon, before you, you change the family history, there's a bolt between your legs. And if you go down and catch it, it's going to catch it you in a very uncomfortable place. Yeah, shimmy right along to the edge and put your hand on there. And then, oh, yeah. yeah. I just don't want to get cut on that rope either. <laughs> yay, yay. <laughs> See you guys. <laughs> Bye now. That was graceful. Well. No injury, that's graceful enough. Yeah, you can see me doing that now, can't you, boys and girls? Yes, you can, not. You know, jumping six foot onto broken material, that's the kind of thing Chill Bill does, never. So, I'm gonna try the ladder, at least it will all be over in a second if I fall. Hey, let's not talk about that, let's see if I can manage. Nicola and Brandon just carried me down this wall. <laughs> <laughs> that could have been YouTube gold. And we didn't get it on film, mind you, how we would have... We needed someone else down here filming, really. But anyway, precipitate drop and, you know, a heavy weight as well. These are strong people. Down here, nowhere back, the only way forward is forward. River workers. These chaps get up early to do their thing. Just tidying up from the night before. Isn't that cute? So just so you know, that was the wall I just came down, or rather, Brandon and Nicola carried me down, which is a bit of excitement and thrills, to say the least. And now they're off down there, digging and filming. How about that? Filming and detecting at the same time. That is impressive. So let's see if we can find a coin. All I ever ask for is a little coin. Symbol. I just found something really cool. I gotta rinse it off. Hang on. Mm. Boy. It gets quite muddy down here. Yeah, yeah, this is awesome. That. That right there is a nice silver thimble. I am very, very pleased with that. Let's go show that. Hey, Bill. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's mine now. Ah. <laughs> oh, is that silver? It is. You lucky, 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 lucky man. I can't believe that. I can't believe it. And you gave it to me. That is so sweet. Well, you know, I just wanted to repay you for how generous you've been this whole trip. That's, that's kind. That will fit on my... No, you won't... Oh, no, 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 don't say it. No. <laughs> that, that, boys and girls, was a dick joke. Very, very good. 
Wow, congratulations. Thanks. That's your trip done. We can go now. Yep. All right, round it up. Yeah, found it with a CTX. <laughs> so that's my little uncut emerald there. But that may or may not be an uncut emerald, but that is definitely a thimble. And it looks suspiciously like a silver thimble. Uh, it's not too old because the patterns are very regular. But I just think that's probably 1850s-ish. You know, it's going to be not recent because thimbles were really back in the day when you didn't have sellotape and you didn't have zips and all that malarkey. They had to sew things up like sacks. And it's also very small, which is a sign of age. But, uh, but the regularity of the dimples makes me think, you know, the middle of the 1800s, which of course is totally awesome. And that is, honest governor, that is an uncut emerald. Is it? No. Probably not, but you can find them looking like that. It's out of place, that's why I picked it up. Uh, well, if it was silver, it's going to have a mark saying silver. Yeah, yeah. Now, boys and girls, it's certainly got a silver shine to it, even when Brandon stands in the light so I can't video it properly and wants to take it back, which he can't now that I've got it. Um, I think that's a hallmark. Is that a hallmark? Yeah, that's a hallmark. That is blooming now. That's really fantastic because I led poor Brandon astray yesterday, sat him under a restaurant in a cave full of sand, and we found, well, actually by American standards, we found a lot, but nothing of this caliber. And this is, this would make my day. Well, it is now I found it. It has made my day. <laughs> and um, wow, that is just fantastic. A silver thimble from the Thames. Yes. This is the man. I, that's the... I've only found one other silver thimble, and that one by far is in better shape than the one that I found. Yeah, it will be good in the, in the river because it doesn't get hit by, you know, yeah. plows and stuff. Now, just to all you people that might doubt the veracity of this find, like I just did, it is full of gunk on the inside, as you can see there. So this was not dropped and picked up. And also, it's got an English hallmark on it. I can't see my eyes aren't so great, but it looks like an English hallmark. And it's certainly silvery, shiny, and it's got Thames on the inside. And he found it with a CTX, being that he's a hunky guy, he can swing that thing. But that little coil on the end, I think that's really cracking, and I've got one of them, but you know, it's still quite a heavy thing for me, but not for Mr. Thimble Finder. Featherweight. <laughs> you see these bodybuilder types. Carry me down, six foot walls, you know, impressive, impressive, these Americans. So this is the spot. Now, what? What if it's not chickens and police cards? It's, it's they're cutting my bridge down. We'll never get back now. <laughs> Don't cut my bridge down, please, Mr. Cutting Bridge Down Man. What I was trying to say before that man started, started to cut down that bit of iron was that Brandon is using his detector, the CTX with a sniper coil on it, to be a third eye. So you go walking around, you swing this thing, you don't really watch what it's doing, but when it goes oink, you go oh, or in the case of CTX, Meh. you look down, oh, that's interesting, kick it up, boom, you've got yourself a find. So you use the detector not to find things deep, but to act as another sensor for the surface, because quite often you can't really get much more than a fraction of an inch underground. Now, if you read about a mudlark killing a man with a power tool, that will be me. Now, Brandon is enjoying himself much too much. He's not taking any footage. He's just having a good time, which is very, very unprofessional of him as a YouTube sensation. I got, I'm rolling. Oh, you're rolling? I'm rolling. Oh, Mr. Technology. Oh, I see, I see. I stand corrected, or rather, I kind of stagger corrected. Never miss a moment. Yeah, but how are you going to talk to you? How are you going to do a narrative? I'll show you. I'm going to learn from Mr. Spielberg here. That is a bottle. Don't get, don't get, don't get stuck in the mud there. Oh dear. He's American. He thinks that's great. This is old where I come from. You what, you mean 1975? No, that's, that's older than that. Is it? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's 1974? That's like 1900. Really? No. 1920. I thought it was old. Well, it's good. That's good. That's no. I I, I stand to be corrected. Nah. Now this is interesting. The top. I have old. no idea what this is, but I think it's a thing. Is that a thing? Does that say metal on your machine? Uh, I don't know. Let's see. There you go. You get the mud. Ugh. It does not. No. Okay. Well, it looked like a handle on something. It's like a petrified bone. I think it's no, no. It's definitely a knife handle. It's a bone knife handle. 
There we are. You can see the joint up the middle of it, can't you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's a that's that's probably all right. That's probably quite a nice thing. Heck yeah. It, but it's not a silver thimble, nah. Mr. Silver Thimble Man. Now this is an interesting patch because look at that glass. Look how thick that bottle is. That's a very old piece of bottle, and all the pieces are here. Well, not all of them, but quite a few of them are all here. So that's probably been smashed. What happens is the diggers come in, and you know what it's like diggers, when you're digging, you break bottles, you cut pipes in half, that kind of thing. And that happens a lot, so you get often patches of broken glass where people have been digging to get down, to get deep to the good stuff, and a lot of glass and pottery is broken in the process. It's unavoidable. I mean, if you look across the river there, they're digging out the whole foreshore down to however deep, I mean, you know, probably 50 foot. And that's all going to go away and be dumped in the sea. So, you know, if you want to make omelettes, you've got to break eggs. I got nothing, darling, but what he did get is a silver thimble. Really? Let's yeah. see. See, and there's another big one, square nail, handmade. Well, there's tons of them out here, absolutely tons. Here is my million views for my clickbait title. How about this? This is going to be called Mystery Jawbone Found. Call the police! Now, Dr. Tones is going to give me his medical opinion on my find. Should we call the police? That might be human. It's humans, they get everywhere. Okay, Nicola, show me your pins. Okay, so this is to go with uh, Dr. Tones' thimble. Lots of little tiny medieval pins. Dress pins. Those beautiful little round. 1700s, yes. I reckon. None of your medieval, come on. <laughs> Maybe I'm exaggerating, but... Well, they could they're be. They're very old, They anyway. could be. They could be. They could... Well, they're definitely old. And in the olden days, they used to hold their dresses together with pins. They didn't have zips or buttons. They used to pin the whole thing together. Some dresses had up to, like, a thousand pins in them. And you know where the saying, pin money, comes from? No, so you, now you're going to tell me. I wonder what the link could be. Um, actually, I'm not exactly sure of the whole story, but look it up. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess pin money would be the money you'd have to spend regularly to keep your dress together. And just to clarify, you're not using metal detector. No. Just like, aren't you these yeah, I so am. You... Unfortunately, I don't have my knee pads, but yes. Uh, I'm just looking very closely at things on the surface. So pins were used to hold dresses together. They didn't have zips, buttons and all that sort of stuff. So they literally just pin the whole thing together to um, actually make up a dress and all the stuff that went with it. So just pin it all together. So sometimes dresses would have hundreds of pins in them and it would take hours to put the thing together if it was an elaborate dress. And you can imagine those things will be popping out and dropping out all over the place. And your pin money, as Nicola suggested, would be the small change that a woman would have to keep updating her pins, which obviously she would lose left, right and centre. Hold on, hold on. We're making videos here. Hold on. Let's stop enjoying ourselves. Well, let's go see them, shall we? Pin clump coming up. Yeah, as Dr. Tones just said, the iron is everywhere. And Nicola is model like extraordinaire. This is exactly her cult sort of speciality, finding lots of tiny little things amongst all the various bits and bats. So this patch here... Yeah, is... you can see lots of little pins, you see? There's another one. There's another one here, a little bent pin. And these tiny, are all, tiny little pins. And these are all 17, 16, 15th century dress pins. That's right. Tons of them. Yeah, lots and lots. You know, I would guess, I might be totally wrong, that well, they probably threw their old clothes in the river sometimes rather than throw it out, and then obviously it rotted and the pins came out. I love the fact that they're all so uneven and, and uh, different lengths. Now, some of you are going to complain that I should do this properly, but I'm not going to do it properly. I'm just going to scrape it around and see if any coin pops up or anything of interest, like that little bit of copy. See these bolt head, they really do confuse you. Meter into iron, nails, square nails, etc. This is square nail paradise. So, you're Mine Lab Ambassador, is that not right? I am. I am a uh, wine lab field ambassador. Are you now an honorary Aussie? Uh, not quite yet. I not go quite to yet, Australia mate. Australia first. Ah, right. <laughs> 
at A and all that. Now, I hear rumours, and I'm really excited about them, that they're going to be doing a discriminating pinpointer. Yes. I'm all over that like a rash, obviously for here. Obviously, yeah. Once you're amongst all the iron and stuff, you know, you might have a non-ferrous target down in the hole, but if it's surrounded by nails, you're going to be there all day chasing it if it's sounding off on everything. So, finally, someone came out with the concept of having ferrous and non-ferrous pinpointer. So, I mean, I'm going to be able to come down here and go in amongst the nails and pick out copper things, right? Yeah, just with a, a handheld pinpointer instead of like, a, you know, a six inch coil, which is small by any coil standard, but now to have a pinpointer the size of your finger uh, to probe around. And a scalpel, basically. Yeah, it's Not a scalpel, a scalpel. Yeah. I have so, yeah. I've dreamt of that. It's going to be awesome. I have dreamt of that. And, and it will mean, I mean, I've got um, a CTX, so I've already got most of the kit. So it will just be an adjunct to that, I guess. But the beautiful thing is, everyone's going to have to follow suit now. They're going to have to chase <laughs> them because, yeah. you know, detector companies go, why would anybody want one of them? And I go, because I'm a mudlark. Come on, give me one. No, 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 no. <laughs> and now they're all going to have to keep up with Mind Lab, who've really yeah. basically burnt a trail with that. That's going to be fabulous. Yeah, I love that. I can't wait to get a hold of one. So pretty soon. Yeah, well, soon. show it to me and I can steal it. Fully submersible, too. Really great, like me. Well, I'm totally jazzed about that news. You know, as soon as that's out, I'm going to be queuing up with all the other people around the block at the Mind Lab store to get one of them because that is my idea of heaven to have a pinpointer. You just kneel down amongst all these bits of iron. I mean, there's thousands of pieces down here, tens of thousands of pieces, and winkle around to try to hit tiny little copper things, maybe even gold things, maybe even silver things amongst that wall of iron. That is really a fantastic development. And no, I'm not a mine lab ambassador, and I, you know, I haven't been very complimentary about their CTX 3030 because I'm not a muscle man, but that is great news. And I do actually love their Escalibur, which is an amazing piece of kit too, but that's a great piece of news. I am front of the queue to buy that. Stay away from my treasure. Stay away. What have you got? What is it? I don't know, but it's good. It is good. No, you're not going to find it with that. It's a pr true mudlark find this. Okay. It's going to be a piece of junk when I pick it up, but it's looking like something awesome. Now, where is it? 